Hey guys, uh, so this is a update on the water jet cutting machine. Uh, today is Sunday the 30th of uh, July. July the 30th is a Sunday. And uh, so somebody asked recently about the progress on this project and I thought it would be kind of uh, important to give an update on kind of what's going on. So actually right as he posted that question, I started to pull this project back off the shelf. Uh, so the product that this guy is gonna be manufacturing is actually starting to gain the popularity. So I have uh, pulled this guy uh, back off of the shelf, this project, and uh, back um, getting ready to work on it again. So as you can see, quite a bit dusty, sitting in the garage, etc., etc. And you can see I've made a couple of improvements already. So uh, a couple bits of progress. So also I have the box of new parts that just came in today. I'm going to talk briefly about that. And then also, back by popular demand, some new slipper safety shoes. Because you guys thought that was pretty funny. So I was like, okay, let's do it again. Anyways. Um... Yeah, so let's go ahead and talk about it. I'll show you guys uh, the difference compared to last video already of changing to uh, these tubes. So basically what we have here is on the end of the pump right there that goes into the output side of the pump. I had those guys machined. Those are M14 by one and a half. And I think the um, uh, these guys are half an inch or something. Um, the, uh, so it's very very close to the taper on these. Uh, these are the uh, these are the glands or collars. They're either of the two. I always forget. Um, and then the the other mating pieces are the pieces that go inside, which are these pieces. So these pieces go inside, and they thread onto these left hand thread uh, tubes. And so the pump is metric from China, and all these parts are generally standard from the United States. So I had uh, basically, I had a steel M14 by one and a half because it's very hard to get a, um, um, a stainless steel M14 by one and a half made in, uh, or in the United States because the standard for an M14 is a two, two millimeter uh, per thread. So uh, 1.5 is uh, way, more, um, way more fine of a thread. So. Basically, I found some steel ones off McMaster, had those made to basically replicate these and then put in the standard collar. And so now I have the standard inch uh, attached to it. And then everything else after this will be uh, inch, except for I think the cutting head. The cutting head is, I can't remember if it's metric or standard. Anyways, so you'll see that just from the open, um, Okay, so these guys are a quarter inch on the OD, quarter inch tube, quarter inch tube. And you see I have two nuts there. So those were machined like a week and a half ago. And I'll talk about what's the next steps here shortly. So these two guys are a 0.083 inner diameter and then 0.083 wall. So it's basically 0.083 wall, 0.083 inner diameter, 0.083 wall. So it's basically even and these are rated for 60,000 PSI. So already dropping the whole size slightly and having it more directed can get you a lot more uh, force um, and uh, distance out of it. So let's go ahead and turn on the water over here. So you see here it's basically on flat ground and we're getting quite a bit of distance before it hits the ground over there. And that's about, say, uh, 10 feet. 10 feet on the left one, 10 feet on the right, uh, maybe 11 feet on the right one. You see that also there's slightly, the holes seem to be drilled slightly out of, uh, out of level, right? And so the one on the right is slightly tilted up compared to the one on the left, right? So, uh, I'm gonna have to accommodate that in the later portion and so off off camera here I have a compressor attached to the valve here. Let me make sure the compressor doesn't cycle One second. Okay, I got 60 psi I have to up it because this guy's leaking somewhere and You see that still 
not much uh, movement on uh, having pressure added. And I'm using a very, very small hot dog compressor, so it's not going to last very long before it runs out of air. Anyways, so uh, yeah, that's. And these should both be the exact same length. These are six inch ones, and I'll talk about it in a second. Oh! And there it goes. So anyways, I'm going to end up uh, redoing most of this. This is not going to be finalized because in actuality, this guy's going to the to a tank. So it'll be going to the main tank and I'll do water reclaim while uh, doing a lot of the uh, a lot of the filtration. So I need to redo these guys and also you can see they're a little short. So maybe I'll get uh, some longer tubing and do it again or take it from this tubing. Anyways, and then also... I want to add a um, filter mesh on it to make sure that I don't get any uh, junk from the, the water line. And I can do a pretty fine mesh there, um, and also it'll be filtered on the tank once I get to the tank. But even source from the water line, I want to have a filter mesh on it. And because later on the, uh, the flow rate is going to be super low, uh, I could do a pretty fine mesh. And then have some way to easily, quickly uh, interchange it, and maybe clean it out every other cut every other uh, shredder or something anyways so you can see already we're starting to focus the jet but still not enough restriction that uh, adding air does anything so um, yeah so this is the first step and then we'll go ahead and go over the box here about the next couple steps obviously ne the next step is going to be to improve this manifold a little bit it's the same as the last time so here I have a couple extra parts. We have uh, all of these uh, extra nuts and uh, um, collars. And then I have the plugs for the cross. So the bottom side of the cross is gonna be plugged. And then the next point is uh, what the next step on this will be. So these six inch tubes are actually too short to do what I need to do next. So I ordered some eight inch tubes. These are eight inch long. And so basically what's gonna happen is we're gonna have this eight inch tube stick out and then we're gonna cut this at 247 degrees and then basically have it do a 90. So it come out here and then come in to the cross. This one come out, come into the cross. And then I have a really good welder that's really good at welding stainless steel and he claims that he can weld at the 247s and the reason why it's 47 instead of 45 is that it'll come in that one to two degrees on each side when it shrinks. So, um, so two, two degrees off and then uh, weld it and then I'll make a 3D printed fixture that holds these guys up and then welds them in, and then the welder will weld it in at 45 degrees, 45 degrees and then it'll come into the cross. To the cross here. Right? And then everything after this is going to be uh, standard. Right? So then it comes into the cross like this and then I have the plugs to plug the bottom because the bottom will eventually have a pressure transducer which I don't have right now or a pressure gauge which I also don't have right now so eventually there'll be a pressure transducer slash pressure gauge down here but right now I'm gonna plug it with these plugs so this is the plug that goes in there and then you do it without the collar uh, that has to thread in and so this guy just goes in there like that and shoves it into the hole anyways so 47 degrees 47 degrees comes in 8 inches the reason why is 6 inches I wasn't going to have very much room here. Uh, it was going to be very, very tight. Let's go ahead and zoom in here. So yeah, there wasn't going to be enough room here, right? This, this nut was going to be very close to the end. Uh, I think from the inside out, it was going to be, I was only going to have an inch and a half left. So now with the eight inch, I'll add um, two inches on each side. And so that will be uh, quite a bit better because this is going to always stay. This is like a nine something or 10 inches in between. And so that'll always be the same. The only dis di difference is I want to make this guy a little longer here. So now these eight inches will be able to uh, cover that distance. And then we'll put this guy in between like that. And then my flex tubing, my red flex tubing from my last video, the high pressure 30,000 PSI flex tubing. Is it 30 or 40? Something like that, 30 or 40. Uh, will attach here and then eventually pressure transducer here, but it will be plugged in the meantime 
and that guy will come up to the head. Now the head is the next thing that will be machined after these are machined. These will be precision machined to length with the 47 degrees, two of these, and then two for backup. And that way I don't have to have the machine shop make this perfect mirror finish and left hand thread. So that way the machine shop just has to cut it. And so they're gonna cut it and then I'm gonna have the welder weld it. It's gonna go from here inside, uh, cross, here inside, cross. Bottom is plugged, flex tubing comes up to the head, and then the head is the uh, is like the last part I need to machine. That needs to have a 90 come down, because I want the tube to come up like this, and then come in from the side instead of coming down. That way I have more room to put something on top of it. And so with that way, you I can do that, and then have it come in from the side. And then that guy is going to adapt to the cutting head. And that guy's gonna adapt to the top of the cutting head and then interface with the orifice. And the, inter the orifice that goes in there, I have a 5 thou orifice and then I'm probably also gonna get a 4 thou orifice. And then I need to get 22 garnet, um, 22 garnet abrasive, uh, sorry, 220 garnet abrasive for this guy to use. The standard is like 80, but for this guy with the size of the stream with a 5 thou orifice, I'm gonna need a 5 thou or 4 thou orifice, I'm gonna need a 220. Garnet just to be able to accelerate with the amount of mass I have and then the next thing is this guy the small set uh, Hypotherm cells, which is a uh, AccuStream AccuStream has been bought out by Hypotherm uh, the smallest uh, tungsten um, Nozzle mixing nozzle they sell is 20,000 so ideally you want to do three times the size of the orifice so ideally the right size is 15 thou or a uh, 10 thou depending if I switch to a uh, sorry or 12 thou so 12 or 15 thou so maybe at that point I'll get some sort of tungsten carbide um, nozzle made for me from some grinder some uh, uh, tool grinding shop at, at that point that will probably be when I'm already in manufacturing I'll probably deal with it at the at the time for uh, this size nozzle it's pretty close it's only off by 5 thou and so uh, eventually when we get to that point We'll get there when we get there. Uh, so yeah. Next thing is this week, I plan on having that 47 and 47 cut on both of these. And then welded either this week or next week. And then uh, I will do another test with the tube. So we'll do the same video here, but with the flex tube. And that will show uh, how much, or I, could even, I, or I don't even need to do the flex tube. I could do the flex tube because uh, I also want to test that. But I could also do this guy, so I could have this guy go like this, and then tilt it at whatever angle, and then have it shoot out that way, and we'll see how far it goes. Because basically, we've cut the area a huge amount compared to the original. And so we'll start to get the choking effect that we need to where maybe the air pressure will start to help, right? You see there, it does push. It does push water out of it, but yeah. And the next thing I want to talk about right before we close out this video is uh, the, pr the uh, CFM needed. And here's the orifice right here, 5 thou, 5 thou orifice, 5 thou, there it is, ruby, right? So that guy will go in there when the, this one interfaces with it. So uh, we could try it with the cross and the flex tubing next time. Um, so another thing I want to talk about is the CFM required. So it said that if you run this guy at seven bar, which is like 110 or something like that, which is like four, which is max pressure that you can run on this is seven bar input pressure. And that'll run a uh, 46,000 PSI or something like that. It says that you need like 25 CFM of air at seven bar, which most compressors can't do, especially at 100% duty cycle. So that would be the next thing I have to look at improving is, okay, how am I going to get a compressor to drive this guy? Obviously, I'm not going to be running at 7 bar. I may up it to 30 bar. I'll have to look at my flex tubing. But I, I may up, up it to, sorry, 30,000 PSI. So I may up it to, what, 5 bar or something like that. Uh, I think it's like 80 PSI. Uh, but I need to do the calculations to figure out the CFM required. Uh, for that to work and then obviously I want everything here to be no leak no leak anywhere conserve that energy and then uh, I'll have to see the the cutting speed because obviously this guy is going to be very very choked at the end uh, of the 5,000 orifice 
um, five slash four thou orifice. So the the hopefully it you takes most of the energy, and then I'll have to see. I want to see the flow rate coming out of here. So how much energy do I have left that wasn't transferred to the water and is just getting evaporated to the air? And another thing I want to try is see if I can suck the pressure coming out of here. So this would be the feed for the air compressor, right? So we'll see, somehow make that a feed for the air compressor so I could return some of that energy back into the system and reclaim it instead of it just getting uh, invented. All right, so that's where we're at. Hopefully, uh, next couple weeks, uh, I can get it to shoot out of that cross and then shoot it out of the flex tubing and then have the flex tubing adapt to the cutting head and then do some water cutting and then get the garnet to work and then do some garnet cutting and then build the gantry, which I've been uh, contemplating ever since I restarted this project about three weeks ago. And uh, we'll talk about that in a later video. I have a couple ideas for that. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Goodbye.